Hello and welcome back to another GCSE revision video. Now, lots of you guys are really convinced when it comes to the power and conflict anthology that the power of nature, the role of nature, nature will be the question that comes up in this year's GCSE exams. So guys, let's talk about it. Let's get into it. What can you write about and what can you analyze if the power of nature and the theme of nature is your chosen set question as part of this year's GCSE exams. Now, this is a really interesting prediction because guys, bear in mind that the power of nature and a nature question has actually never come up in past questions, okay? So this would be the first time if the power of nature comes up. And when I had to think about this question, I thought the most perfect extract or rather the most perfect main poem that I think would be presented to you guys if the power of nature did come up as part of the question for your power and conflict anthology, I think the prelude would be the main poem you have to consider and compare with another poem on the power of nature, okay? So guys, I'm gonna make the assumption that the power of nature may come up in this year's GCSE exams and the exam board AQA will be selecting prelude and asking you to compare how the power of nature is shown with one other poem. I believe if this question were to come up, the best poem to compare the power of nature with the prelude to is Exposure by Wilfred Owen. Now, before I get into how to craft a perfect response comparing these two poems, guys, remember that next week on Thursday, I'll be running a one-off power and conflict GCSE revision class where I'll go over how to write model answers to pass paper questions, as well as the key quotes to remember for all 15 poems. So make sure you sign up for that. However, let's get to it. Power of nature, let's say this question comes up. I believe it, if it does come up, Prelude will be your main poem. And as I mentioned, I think if Prelude comes up in terms of the power of nature, you should contrast it and find some interesting similarities and differences with exposure, okay? And in your opening introduction and in your thesis statement, because guys, remember that you should always have an opening thesis statement. Talk about what message both poets are trying to impart when it comes to the power of nature or the theme of nature. This is what you talk about if you're comparing prelude to exposure. Mention the fact that in your introduction that both poems are used by the poets Wordsworth and Wilfred Owen to illustrate and reveal nature's power and dominance over man. Both poems really show this quite vividly and make it clear that the romantic poet Williams Wordsworth, okay, so the author of the prelude as well as the war poet Wilfred Owen they both present nature to be in conflict with man. In other words, nature, when it's in conflict with man, actually overwhelmingly dominates and crushes man, okay? Make that really, really clear in your opening discussion and in your thesis statement on a powerful essay on the power of nature, okay? Now, first paragraph, and of course, remember guys, you're talking about both poems, meaning in your first paragraph, in your second paragraph, and your third paragraph, you must make sure you are contrasting within the same paragraph, both poems. So what should you do in terms of your opening paragraph, which not only contrasts both poems, but also includes techniques as well as context. Make your first paragraph comparing nature and how it's shown in exposure and the prelude, make it a context paragraph as well as a language paragraph. Context is your AO3, okay? So how were both poets, what influenced both poets, but of course language is your subject terminology, okay? Stuff like alliteration, metaphors, similes, and so on. Your first point, comparing the power of nature should be a difference, contrast the two. And mention how the prelude presents the speaker's shift from innocence, i.e. the speaker who gets on the boat innocently looks at nature. They think that nature is quite passive. However, they shift from seeing nature in a really innocent way as being passive to shifting into experience where they see nature as quite dark, quite menacing and quite dominant. On the other hand, so you contrast this with the fact that in exposure, we are presented with how nature destroys and defeats the will of men. In, um, specifically to exposure, nature destroys the will of the soldiers. So it's a difference point. Now the quotations which illustrate this, and of course you wanna tie it into language techniques is, in the prelude, talk about the um, Wordsworth's use of celestial imagery, celestial language, his reference to the stars and sky, okay? And however, 
at first, so this is when he's innocent, he's looking at the stars and sky, okay? So he's really admiring the stars, the sky, the moon, and so on. He sees it from a perspective of innocence. He actually thinks that he's quite dominant over nature. But towards the end of the poem, this is contrasted with when he is haunted by the dark side of nature that he experiences and he says no pleasant images of trees, ellipses, sea and sky. And this here he is using the semantic field of nature, which is a language technique. What this obviously illustrates is Wordsworth, when it comes to the prelude, wants to demonstrate his shift as the speaker from seeing nature as this really nice, passive thing to something that's quite dark and menacing, okay? This shifts him into experience. Contrast it in terms of evidence with the reference to um, how the men, the soldiers stare snow dazed, okay? This is an exposure. And of course, he also references, so this is Wilfred Owen talks about how nature has made these men shadows of their former selves, they're made into ghosts. And of course, the language techniques, you wanna talk about sibilance and stare and snow, and also the metaphor ghosts. What does this demonstrate when you're comparing it to exposure in terms of a difference? Of course, what this demonstrates is how nature is so vicious that it destroys the wills of the soldier. And of course, make it make this a contextual observation. Get context out of the way in your first paragraph so that you don't forget your AO3 marks in your essay, okay? When you're writing really frantically in this exam. Now, the context point you want to illustrate is Prelude was actually used by Wordsworth as a romantic poet to demonstrate his own personal journey. Remember that Wordsworth? himself really celebrated nature. He saw nature as really beautiful. However, he himself uses this poem to demonstrate his own personal journey and his own personal shift from seeing nature as this really passive thing to something that's quite domineering, quite scary, okay? That's what you want to talk about contextually with regards to uh, the prelude. However, you want to then also link this into how nature's uh, defeat of men is demonstrated through uh, Wilfred uh, Owen's own experience of the First World War. Remember that uh, Wilfred Owen wanted to use this poem to demonstrate the really horrific conditions that soldiers experienced in the trenches where many of them died from uh, frostbite, from literally natural causes, okay? Nature attacked them, killed them off, okay? That's your first point and make that point a context point and a language point, okay? Get your context out of the way. Your second perfect paragraph will be yet another difference paragraph, okay? And in this case, make this paragraph an observation of form in both poems. Remember that you need to make sure you talk about language, form and structure within your essay. What could you talk about when you're mentioning how nature is presented in prelude and exposure? Mention the fact that prelude is used by Wordsworth to present nature as sublime and beautiful because it inspires at the beginning of the poem. Okay, so now we'll shift to the beginning. It inspires within Wordsworth or as he rose, okay? So you wanna mention how actually what's really interesting, so now here, you're, you're picking up a slightly different point on the prelude. Talk about how Wordsworth, when he first starts rowing, he is inspired by this sublime and beautiful nature, okay? In contrast to exposure, which depicts nature as quite menacing and relentless in its attack against the soldiers. Now the quotations that you want to use when you're contrasting these two points and of course also linking it into an observation of form is firstly of course mention in terms of form that Prelude is written in one long dramatic monologue and he, uh, the speaker, feels stealth and troubled pleasure as he admires the moon and even the sparkling light of the stars, okay? That's early on in the poem, in the prelude. Contrast this, of course, in terms of evidence with when uh, in exposure within the eight regular quintains, a quintain is a five line stanza, okay? And um, uh, exposure is written in eight five line stanzas, eight regular quintains. The quotations you want to tie this form observation to is firstly, of course, at the beginning, um, Wordsworth talks about how nature is menacing and relentless as it attacks them because he describes the merciless iced east winds, but also towards the middle, he mentions how nature kind of like soldiers reinforces itself, brings more and reinforcements to attack the soldiers, okay? Because he describes the flowing flakes that flock pause and renew in the middle. And by the end, he describes how nature, its attack never stops, right? Nature literally never stops attacking these soldiers because he says 
at the end in the final stanzas how the frost will fasten on uh, this mud around us, okay? So the um, nature never stops attacking the men, even at the end when they're all dying and the eyes are ice, okay? Now, this, two, uh, this first and second paragraph, okay, as you've hopefully noticed, they're focusing on differences, okay? So of course, in the first paragraph, talking about language technique, you're thinking about differences between the two poems. In the second paragraph, mentioning form, differences. You do want to mention also similarities. So in your final paragraph, comparing how nature is presented in prelude and exposure, make this a structure point and mention and look for similarities. The big similarity is both prelude and exposure present nature as the enemy. It's an aggressor that chases the speaker in the prelude, in his boat, and it's also an aggressor that attacks the soldiers and kills them off, okay? And we can see in both poems that nature is really deadly, okay? So, you know, of course, nature with an exposure kills off the men more than the war, okay? Literally throughout the entire poem of exposure, they're just waiting for a war, right? And um, in contrast, of course, in, in the prelude, nature's presented as quite deadly, okay? And this is actually not in contrast, it's similarly, nature's presented as deadly. And this haunts the speaker once he realizes that nature has a scary side. And the quotations you want to use are, firstly, um, the repetition of the um, uh, adjective huge, right? So in the prelude, the speaker talks about, you know, the huge peak, black and huge, that's chasing after him. And he talks about how he tried to run away, right? In his uh, boat, because he struck and struck again. Use repetition, repetition is a structural technique. Contrast this or add uh, the exposure quotations. And this is the quotation to talk about. Mention how um, Wordsworth describes Dawn massing her melancholy army. And here, there is no punctuation at the end, so this is on Drummond, which is also structure, but equally the repetitive reference to, but nothing happens. The only thing that's happening within this poem is nature attacking the men, okay? So, in terms of the theme of nature in power and conflict, say if nature comes up, I strongly believe that Prelude will be a chosen poem, okay? And let's say if Prelude is uh, given to you guys in your upcoming exams and you're asked to talk about power of nature, happy days, because you literally start off by um, mentioning this in your thesis statement, how nature's power and dominance over man is demonstrated, then mention your first paragraph, uh, a difference point, okay? Tying it into language. Your second paragraph should be to do with form, difference point, and then your final paragraph to do with structure. So that's really it when it comes to how to write about the theme of nature in your power and conflict GCSE exams.